In the early 90s, there was only one beaver colony in Yellowstone National Park. And today, there's more than nine. And it's all down to the return of one surprising species, the grey wolf. These wolves gave rise to one of the most exciting ecological discoveries of the last century, the existence of the Trophic Cascade. Wolves were hunted to extinction in Yellowstone during the 1920s, leading to a trophic collapse. It's a process which begins at the very top of the food web with the apex predators, and the effects cascade right down to the bottom of the ecosystem. With no wolves, the numbers of elk in the park exploded. Bears and puma still hunted the elk, but wolves were the main controller of elk numbers. So what happened next? Firstly, the growing numbers of elk decimated the park's vegetation. And because there were no wolves, they were safe to stay in one place and overbrowse the surrounding area. Slowly but surely, the tree cover in Yellowstone disappeared. This loss of vegetation was felt hardest in winter, when the elk gathered around waterways, stripping back riverside willows, aspens and cottonwoods. Bad news for the beavers, which depend on willow stands to survive the winter. And within a few years, beavers had all but vanished from Yellowstone. And with no wolves, now the main cause of elk death was hard winters and deep snow. This wrecked havoc on the scavengers, like foxes and bears, because they lost out on a reliable food source in spring and summer and autumn. But strangely, coyotes flourished. Wolves will usually kill and displace their smaller cousins, keeping them low on the food chain. Without them, the coyotes rose up, and their favourite food is rodents. So these small mammals saw a massive collapse in populations as the coyotes pushed them to the brink. But in the mid-90s, after a lengthy legal battle, 41 wild wolves were released into Yellowstone. By 2019, there were at least 94 wolves in eight packs, with at least seven breeding pairs. And their presence changed everything. The wolves killed elk, causing a drop in their numbers. But more importantly, the wolves forced the elk to change their feeding habits. No longer could they stay in one place. They now had to keep constantly on the move to evade wolf ambush. This change is called a landscape of fear, and it meant that little by little, the vegetation could recover. The result? Overgrazed areas began to regenerate. And in just six years, trees quintupled in size, creating new habitats for all kinds of forest animals. Bird numbers in particular saw a massive increase as the forests spread across the hillsides. But what about the beavers? Well, with the elk on the move in winter, and avoiding the narrow river valleys where they might be trapped by wolves, the streamside willow stands recovered, allowing the beavers to recolonize the lowland rivers. And as the beavers spread, they built new dams and ponds, and their ecosystem engineering sent positive effects cascading across the environment. Their dams stored water, replenishing the water table, and these dams provided habitat for otters, muskrats, waterbirds, and migratory fish species like trout and salmon. And the rivers themselves changed. The regenerating forests reinforced their banks and prevented erosion, causing them to slow down and meander. Back on land, the wolves also killed some of the coyotes. Good news for the hawks, birds of prey and mustelids like the wolverine, because some of the pressure was taken off their rodent prey, allowing their populations to increase. Now you might think that adding another predator to the scene might increase competition, but it turns out that the presence of wolves actually benefits other hunters. Wolves kill elk all year round, and this is good news for hunters like ravens and eagles, and especially bears. Emerging from hibernation in spring, the bears can gorge on wolf-killed carrion, and the regrowing forests provide them with all the berries and nuts they need to pack on the pounds for the next deep sleep. So the case of Yellowstone and its wolves is the classic example of a trophic cascade. How the wealth and diversity of an entire ecosystem is dependent on just a few keystone apex predators. 
remove them and you remove the regulators of the natural system and an ecological collapse will follow. But bring back the wolves and balance is restored.